Hello, everyone. This is Josh Renzi, the founder of Incelerate. Today, I have a friend of mine and a client, uh, uh, John Kresser from JFQ Lending. How are you doing, John? I'm awesome. Coronavirus quarantine. How are you? <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, we're both, uh, we're both quarantined right now. What I wanted to do, just um, I'm going to get in a little bit about John's history. I'm going to ask John about that. But before we start with that, I want to kind of give a little bit of um, my personal knowledge of uh, John and JFQ Lending. We've been working with John for about two years. I think when I first met him, he had closed uh, $9 million that month in production. Uh, last month, how much did you close in production, John? Uh, first month ever, we did over 300 million. We finished about 308 million funded. 308 million. So in less than two years, from 9 million to 308 million dollars in production, and I think you're doing that with less than 90 loan officers. Is that correct? Uh, we had 77 loan officers fund loans last month. All right. So as you guys all know out there in the mortgage world, that's pretty impressive, John. You you know that you guys are doing something that is unique. So that's just to kind of let everyone know uh, what you guys have been accomplishing in the two year period. Um, Obviously, you've been a client of ours as well, so we have a lot of good work and knowledge with you. Um, so just with that, you know, before we get into what you're doing now, just give me a couple you know, minutes. What's your background? Because, you know, that's kind of something that, you know, a lot of people want to yeah. understand. How did you get to where you are? What are you using to make yourself so successful? So my background, I started in the mortgage industry, uh, 21 years old, fresh out of college. I actually started at Quicken Loans. And the things I'm thankful for is at Quicken, they do a few things extremely well. Uh, first is culture. They instill in you from day one, you're, you're fighting for the big picture company first, which we've obviously taken at our company very well. The second thing is they're, they're extremely process driven. Um, so that was ingrained in me from day one is, you know, you can see the end game of where you want to be, but you're not going to get there nearly as efficiently without a process built out. I spent about eight and a half, nine years in the retail world at Quicken. I worked my way up through the uh, leadership path there, had some awesome mentors that taught me the value of building relationships with people that work with you. And then coupling those relationships with the need to develop out a process to get to the next level. And so what it actually enabled us to do, and we found that our company was the same concept of you want to have a very, very strong internal culture, uh, not just culture, but a sales culture, right? So our loan officers understand the words and the meaning of we have to be elite. So the reason that we can fund $300 million with 77 loan officers is because they have to put up 25 to 30 units every month not for a paycheck, but that's just what everybody else around them does, right? And I think for us, what was important is instilling that um, sales culture from day one. And then we really got really lucky with the folks that we hired out on the executive team to help us build out those process. I'm a mortgage guy, right? I have been since day one. I'm not the most patient person in the world. Uh, I'm not the, the biggest stickler for details. So I realized very early on that I needed to surround myself with people that were really strong in those areas. We brought in two or three different folks that um, have a really good background in, okay, I, I see where you want to go. And I'm like, uh, they kind of describe me as the Donkey Kong. I walk around, I just knock walls down all day long and they sweep it up behind me and make sure it all works. Right. And so that was, I think three or four months after we started the companies, we were looking for a CRM because my philosophy up front was let's overspend on marketing dollars. So my loan officers have too many phone calls up front because if they have too many phone calls, all I know is they're going to convert. And then what are they going to do? Well, they're also going to go tell all their friends that are loan officers how great it is at JFQ Lending, right? And so I looked at my marketing budget as also my recruiting budget. And so it made it more palatable every single month to, you know, every single day the phones, we miss phone calls, right? And so here we are, a startup. We don't have, you know, I don't have rich parents. I don't have a trust fund. Neither do my partners. We're just normal people. And we're overspending on leads month one, two, three, four. We still do it today, two and a half years later. And the reason I do that is I like when people are busy and I can use my process in place to drive conversion, right? And so for us, that was really the big swing was we signed up, I think, with Accelerate maybe month four or five, but it really wasn't until month seven or eight where we really started diving in. We had some of your folks fly out to Arizona. Uh, we sat in a conference room for two days and we literally on a uh, whiteboard built out the entire call flow we wanted from start to finish. We built out the routing we wanted. We built out the escalation piece. So my biggest pet peeve was, you know, I'm overspending on marketing, right? So my LOs are so busy, well, they're picking and choosing which leads they want to work based off of loan size or state or how easy the lead was. And so I needed to accelerate in the background to help me build out that process to then reserve things back up. Yeah, and I, I, one of the things I remember um, when I first met you and I sat down with uh, uh, you and Justin as well, and we sat in there and you guys were asking questions and you asked about reporting. And the first thing I, I, I looked over to Scott Roberts, who's with us, and I said, if you left, um, so these are a bunch of smart people and they asked all the right questions. You guys were asking about processes and I knew 
that you saw process. And I think so explain that to maybe what to the, the rest of the world out there that, you know, we, there's a lot of lenders out there. Some are very retail driven, meaning they're getting all the business from just referrals. Yep. Some are very consumer direct driven, they're marketing. The, the world is going more and more as consumers are going more and more online. And hey, listen, this COVID-19 thing more than anything is showing us that all these people are digital. I mean, I, people are buying from Amazon, Instacart, like they never, you know, they have never used those transactions before. And these are the things that are actually working. But that process that you designed, so you, you're literally laying out, because I remember being part of some of these conversations, you're laying out from like the name and a list to where it goes to a funded status or a denied status. But even in a denied status, there's still a whole work through that goes back into a name on the list. So you're defining every trigger point, first call, second call, they take an application, don't take an application, right? All these things, and then you're automating that through and celebrating now. Every single part of the function from when I first say hello to somebody to when we actually fund a deal, right? And, and that's where, um, you know, with you guys, it really helped because as I kept adding loan officers, well, I didn't keep my marketing spend the same. I would add proportionally. So if I added five LOs and it was 20% more LOs, I'd increase marketing 20%. So I'd always have to use Incelerate to backfill leads because we're, we're consumer direct. So we're a heck of a lot busier Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then my Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays were not as busy, right? So what do we want to do? Well, let's work the Monday, Tuesday, low-hanging fruit that we just didn't have time to, to properly work up front. And so we have escalation pieces we built into Accelerate where my, my LO has a conversation on Monday with no credit pulled. You know, I'm an owner of a company that's trying to drive profit and revenue, right? So if I'm in a spot where um, I've got um, all these different leads Monday, Tuesday, we didn't pull credit on. Well, if it's a $400,000 deal, I want to reserve that up Thursday, Friday versus have my LOs not do anything, right? And so we, we've refined that process and we're at the point now where I've actually been able to roll out uh, full on escalation teams. So I now have, have folks where they only leave, they only work denied leads from somebody else in process, denied leads, meaning we got a client conditionally approved, final approved, resubmitted, whatever the case is, they didn't close. We funnel that back to, to another team and then they work those leads specifically. And guess what happens? There's so much meat, meat on the bone. They still close them. They're still closing 15 to 20 units a month. And, and I think that, you know, for lenders out there, um, one of the things that, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur. You're obviously an entrepreneur, right? And I think lenders can look into their, the mortgage industry is very entrepreneur. If you look into your own business right now, as a entrepreneur place, you have business in pockets right there. I've seen lenders do that where denied loans, they have a workout team, escalation point, And there's tons of money to be made there. Like it, it, it could go back through. I think where lenders maybe struggle, and this is where you have a leg up is you have visualization to all that. And you have a process, you know, a lot of lenders don't have a CRM that actually talks from, you know, it's and same with consumer direct groups don't have a CRM that can go from a lead to a funded loan to back to a new customer and denied loan and work in the process. So I think that has probably been, you know, really helpful for you. What do you, um, what do you see, uh, you know, with that right now with your employees working from home? And I know that you actually had your employees work from home weeks before this. The, yeah. Okay. So you were, I know you were having your office clean. You're very much on top of this. And I think you, we discussed, you had already ordered computers for your next classes ahead of time. So you're very much looking ahead of the market. How are your employees in, uh, adjusting to this now when they go home and they work? What, you know, how is in salary helping them? How is, you know, what, what's, how does that look for them now? Well, for them, for, in terms of in salary, it's business as normal. I mean, that's kind of the benefit is that we tie everything back in through the cloud, which Accelerate oper obviously operates off of. So they have no difference in their workflow, right? Um, about three weeks ago at this point, so we're Arizona, I live in Arizona. So we just went under uh, lockdown yesterday. Well, I had our folks working from home two and a half weeks ago because I foresaw what was happening. And I really think right now for any business in the entire country, how you operate in this time, and Mark Cuban actually said this as well, is this is what's gonna define how your company looks for the decades to come. Did you take care of your employees? Um, you know, did you make sure that you kept them safe? Did you put like our, our motto right now is people over profits, right? So a lot of companies are going to slow down on spending and marketing. I don't believe in that. We're still spending on marketing. Why? Cause I've got people that have families to feed. If we don't write loans on the front end, I have an entire operations of 250 folks in the back end that can't fund loans. They can't, if I don't have, if my senior processor doesn't have any leads to work, what is he or she going to do? Right. And so I look at it now as my obligation as an owner to, to make sure I take care of my people. And that's the best part about working from home is that our setup is exactly the same. Uh, we had all of our folks take their stuff home right, right from the office, 
headsets, laptop, we're, we all work off of laptops, right? Docking stations, monitors. And guess what? They log right into Insular like normal. Their business operates as normal. Um, one thing we are doing that that's helped quite a bit is we started doing, you know, everybody's utilizing like the Brady Bunch Zoom stuff. What's well, actually pretty cool, you can you can put together little Zoom happy hours we've done. We can do Zoom team huddles people have done. We've done Zoom yoga stuff, right? Just kind of keeping it fresh because at the end of the day, everybody's scared right now. Uh, we're scared of the unknown. When is this going to end? Is it 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? When can we go back to the office? You know, then you can talk about the bigger picture stuff of what's happening with mortgage-backed securities and pricing and lenders. Are they going out of business? Um, and your job and my job as an owner really is to make sure people understand it's okay. This is America. We're the greatest country in the history of the world. We're going to figure this out and we're going to come back in 60 or 90 days. And we're going to be stronger than ever. Right. And so the ability to just take a system like Accelerate or our phone system, you know, use intelligent call routing and have it work anywhere has been invaluable. And that process still flows through the same exact way of prioritization we set up with Accelerate still the same way. The whole workaround works exactly the same way. They're just working from home right now. No, oh, that's, that's awesome. And, and that's, I want to commend you on that. You know, um, as you know, my, Tristan into the world out there. I've known my son is a loan officer now. Tristan works for JFQ Lending, so I and he and he moved uh, back in during this quarantine. So I've been seeing his Zoom meetings and the communication and the team meetings, and I think that's something that, um, if I could stress that, I've seen. Uh, you know, I've I've watched a lot of things you guys have done great. And if you look in the mortgage space, anyone that's at, have, is now going to be at over a three billion dollar year originator from start. You know, starting up, and I remember you guys are working in your uh, your house, I think, or in your couch oh, yeah. for the first month. You know cutting out loans. I, I did the same thing years and years ago. So I, you know, but, but the level you've grown to, you've done a lot of wonderful th things. I see the communication and the team building as something that um, you guys are doing a really good job at. And so for all those out there, lenders out there, you have employees, I think what you just said is right. People over profit. And really to your point is company first, you said earlier on, which is in order to have company first, it's people over profit because you have to have those people healthy to be able to continue to someday make a profit. So it's, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. You take care of your people, your good people will take care of you, right? We're all in this together. I think it's kind of the, the, the part of it, but just the leadership of the Zoom meeting thing. So for lenders out there, like that's do that with your team. I think people want to hear from everyone. Hey, what's going on? Because right now, if they're not hearing from you as a leader, they, either, a, they, don't, they don't know if you care. They don't know if you know what's going on. And, and, and they're unsure of what is going on. So you could have a lender, leaders out there have great plans of what they're doing with the company, but if they're not telling the employees and telling the staff, then they don't know what's going on. So the communication thing I think is really, is really powerful and impactful. And obviously, um, you know, the, the, the systems, uh, processes and, and, and procedures that you guys have put in place, you know, if, if, if there's one thing that you would lead people that you say, Hey, over the last two years, you know, um, what are the thing that you, I mean, what have you focused on the most, you know, or what is it that is, uh, has it been marketing? Has it been sales? Has it been operations? Has it been process? You know, wh where do you, where do you see that you spend the, you spend your most time that you find that you get the most valuable or get the most value out of? For me as the owner, it's actually recruiting um, because I'm not the greatest IT person, right? My job is to go out and find the greatest IT person and get the hell out of their way you know, uh, go find the best VP of operations and let him or her do their thing and get out of the way. And I think what we really enjoy in our executive leadership team works really well in the fact that, you know, I, I like to call it like the Knights of the Round Table. I'm kind of like a history buff. I've always liked history. So I always imagine we don't have a square. We have a circle. I, I don't sit at the head of a table as the majority owner of the company. My partner and I sit in a circle and we have discussions. But ultimately, unless I'm morally or ethically opposed, I need to hire the right people and then get the heck out of their way. And what that's allowed everybody to do is naturally our, our head of operations is awesome at building out operations processes. So when we started, we operated off of Excel. All of our processors use Excel. Did we order a payoff? Did we order a case number? Did we order HOI? And she came in she said, I, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the position. Just please tell me you guys don't operate off of Excel. And my partner and I both started laughing, right? And so the first thing that she actually did is, is we now we, all of our workflow and processes built out of Encompass. So if I'm a loan officer or if I'm a sales manager or if I'm a, a junior, senior funder, whatever the, your job title is, there's notes and there's a paper trail throughout all of Encompass. So we go back to working from home. Everybody can see everything because we built out that process. Not we, she did it, right? Uh, from the IT standpoint, putting the right person in place to then say, okay, I, I feel great and confident. You know, we, we use um, our, uh, the reason that we're able to pick up 40 or 50 units I purchased for computers and setups ahead of time about two months or a month and a half ago. 
Well, they were out of stock everywhere. How did we get it? Because he's got relationships in the industry uh, with a distributor that said, all right, I'll give you guys these that were earmarked somewhere else. So we're still hiring. Now we figured out we're going to do, we do FaceTime interviews and it's, and candidates laugh, but if we want, we believe strongly in the next 30 to 60, 90 days, when all this stuff hashes out, interest rates, the 10-year treasury is still at 0.7, give or take today, right? right. So when mortgage-backed securities catch up, everybody's predicting rates could be around 3% or less. Yeah. So it's in my best interest to invest. We've done really well. I don't think we're going to do $3 billion this year, three and a half. I think we're going to do five and a half billion. And we're going to keep hiring and building out processes to support that. Um, and at some point, I'm going to work our, our work our way and we're going to market into that, into those funding. So that people that I have to support. And sometimes what are we doing this month? What's our strategy? I cut margin out. We're closing loans at a loss this month. Why? Because I got LOs that need to eat and provide for their families. I've got processors that have to provide for their families. I don't need to be a greedy owner. That's not, that's not the market we're in right now. We got to make sure your people are protected. And these are lessons that'll stick with hopefully your team members and employees for years to come. Listen, that's, I, I, I really commend you on that. And I think I think if everyone else listening, that sums up, if you can hear from John, obviously one is there's some passion there. And I like the, the Donkey Kong thing. You're going to walk through walls and you know, you, you, you're not afraid to go take action. Um, and then also taking, taking care of your employees. So that's, I think, you know, we get the symbiotic relationship. So I like it. You're growing the company. Um, I think the industry, I mean, we, we, when the market gets back, when servicing uh, normalizes and lenders get through this pipeline and we understand what's going on, yeah, rates are going to be low. Of course they are. And, you know, even before this market dip rates, we were already, everyone was already humming very, very happy along. So I think this is a, as a temporary blip and I love, love it that you guys are growing. Um, I love that you guys are a partner of ours and, and uh, a client. And, you know, we really appreciate your uh, support there. And anyone else out there, you know, have um, any questions to uh, us in the future, you know, uh, shoot me an email, uh, find out more about Accelerate and uh, John. We really appreciate it. And uh, loan officers, people in the industry, if you're looking for a, a company to go work at, is, is, as you just heard, they're still hiring. And uh, this is a company that's grown and done great things. I'd reach out to John at uh, JFQ Lending. So thanks, John, and everyone else have a great day.